you know, we, we have to let people know that they're in there and that we can't keep doing things the way we've been doing them. You know, apparently, I guess, I guess people need to hear the same thing over seven, at least seven or eight times, right? So we could say that this is why the channel is important, mm -hmm. right? And well, I just want to ask well one, one question, which I think is powerful, which is, are all of our most autistic children um, intelligent in the way that they're able to receive, you know, because a lot of parents will say, well, that's great. That's their child. But my child is got some delays. And I want to hear from Joao if what would the percentage be? I mean, I know that there are exceptions, of course, you know, on how many of the autistic population really are receiving the information, understand and are intel intelligent. <laughs> You're excited, aren't you? I do that. <laughs> but I would love that. That's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an important question. Thank you, Joao. Don't judge the book by its cover, right? <laughs> what was that? Don't don't judge the book by its cover is what I'm getting. Yes. It's so easy to judge the book by its cover. Don't we do that? Or our entire we lives. We, we all yeah. do it, right? Even neurotypicals, if we want to label ourselves that, but we all do it with each other. Um, well, he answered, Laurie, uh, we all have lots to share and the soul is whole, but we have to manage getting autistic individuals a means to express the soul and its knowledge. Does he have, does he have any suggestions? Can he give us some, this is what it would look like if you express the soul? Is that a, is that a fair question? Is there, um, like for example, for him, what would that mean for him? How can he express his soul? The soul doctor. Right. Mm -hmm. The soul doctor's in. <laughs> I think we should call him Dr. Joao from now on. <laughs> I think we should too. Dr. Joao it is. <laughs> So it's basically about us giving permission for the soul to express it, um, itself. I, I heard him say be open, which yes. is the key in. Don't hold on to beliefs of what is. Be open to let the soul through. So yeah. that makes a lot of sense. So that is almost like instead of having these preconceived notions of what is and you know we have our beliefs of what is let all that go and just it's almost like letting your mind uh, stop wa wandering when you're meditating it's like just let it all go and just be there and let what's gonna come come yes yeah that's that's <laughs> fabulous I love it yeah um, be, be open without expectations yes yeah and that's uh you know, I love telling parents this because I don't know if you guys know who Ram Dass is, but he was a big sort of hippie guru that, you know, talks about like he wrote Be Here Now and all these other things. And he talks, he talks about something called the exquisite paradox. And I'm, I'm putting this in here because a lot of parents, um, myself included in the olden days, are afraid of just saying, let go of what is, stop worrying about what is, and just letting, trusting in the universe to bring what's supposed to come. And Ram Dass talks about the exquisite paradox. The minute you let go and you surrender, not only do you get what you think you wanted, you get it in such a form that you couldn't, it's so much better than you could have ever imagined on your own. And um, I've seen that happen with Jack so many times, you know, you're so clenched down trying to make things go a certain way and you have expectations or you think it's supposed to be this way. But when I've just said, all right, that's it, because I've I'm done with the struggle and the holding on and the trying to make it point a certain way. And when I've given it up to the universe and said, all right, bring it on, whatever it is. And I've turned the other way and breathed and been open. It's like, wow, yeah. look what just came my way. Like, wow, wow, wow. I can't tell you how many times I've had those wows. I really have. So I'm experiencing that right now with my new home. Yeah, because it's true. Like we're kind of like what Abraham is like putting, yes. it's like putting, you know, your desires to the vortex and then you eventually just have to let it go. Yes. And then you're just like, I know that the universe can deliver way more than my imagination 
you know, and it's beautiful to trust it. It's so much more expansive than we can put a, a harness around, you know? So it really is that surrender, that open, that letting go. Because um, what do we do? We, we think, oh, this is what I can get for what I have, you know, my resources. Instead of like, you know what? The universe is infinite. Yeah. And so I'm trusting that and I'm letting go of my own control. Yes. So that's a really good message. I'd like to highlight that message to the parents and teachers. Turn away from what is and just be open like really like go in there with the wonder and awe of anything's possible you know what don't don't pigeonhole yourself or the child or the individual with autism into some sort of preconceived notion and just be open like play with it be like okay what do you got today show me what you got today you know do it in a in a sort of playful, exciting, this is an adventure kind of thing. And um, I think that space will allow the individual to come through. Makes sense. Yeah. I'm getting all excited. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is, this yes, is just reinforce yeah. what we have uh, been saying. We have to let go of what we think things should be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And you know, that's a, that's a good, um, but hard, but necessary lesson for all of us. And I would say, um, as far as my experience with autism, that's probably the number one thing that my son Jack has taught me, right? It's letting go of, it's letting go of the control of thinking that you can make the outcome be a certain way and having a bigger trust and faith that um, your highest good and their highest good knows what they're doing. Like our soul, what's, what are you saying? Our soul knows what it needs to do. If we could just get out of our soul's like way, right? Soul is whole and perfect. Yeah. The soul is whole. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's okay. the mantra, the soul is whole. <laughs> so we, we can always um, learn uh, from all individuals, whether they have autism or not, I guess. Yeah. The message. We all have something to add and to say. We all have knowledge to share. Yes. Um, yes. And you know, with parents, you know, I have two other kids. Um, my littlest one who's seven, I am constantly reminded that because he is so strong willed and he likes what he likes, want, doesn't want anyone to show him or tell him or to do anything for him. And I'm constantly reminded it's, it's almost like he's so glaringly willful to remind me that his soul knows what's best. And as a parent, it's like, oh, we have to do this. We have to do that. But even he, he reminds me daily. I'm not exaggerating daily that I have to step back and say, he knows what's best for him, you know, within the construct of making sure he doesn't, you know, hurt himself or blow the house up or something like that. But, um, but good messages, really he's good hard messages. hardwired, that's why. He's hardwired. <laughs> it is hardwired. That's how it's conditioned. That's how we're raised and that's how we're conditioned. And um, it's a, uh, it is, it's a new humanity, right? It's a new way of being human. It's a new way of interacting with our, our kids and our friends, right? It's You're just- You're all so connected. I have to just say that right now. <laughs> <laughs>